Hey everyone, welcome to True Tan Wrestling. My name is Tanner, and a very common topic going around right now is whether or not the transfer portal is a good thing. This is being talked about all over wrestling media. Phil Wrestling is talking about it, Wrestling Twitter is blowing up about it, and John Smith is for sure loving the topic. And guess what? True Tan Wrestling loves talking about it. So let's have a fun little video talking all about the transfer portal. Please leave a comment in the comment section below with your thoughts, with whether you think it's a good thing, a bad thing, a neutral thing. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, be sure to like and subscribe for more content in the future. Greatly appreciated. Now, I really don't know what place to start with this video because it could really go off the rails easy, and you all know I love to get sidetracked. With that said, please go watch my last video, which is all about Real Woods Transfer, which actually makes this transfer week, I guess. Transfer week? No, 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 no. we're not doing that. <laughs> So I guess I'll start with, well, I guess the pioneer of this, and that's transfer man himself, Nick Siriano of Rutgers. Well, I mean, I guess he's at Michigan for his last year, but hey, remember when he was at Penn State? All right, let's just keep moving. For starters, I want to say I have nothing against people transferring and not to give away my stance too early, but I think transferring is very realistic and necessary for any young or well old man when they are to sign on their final school to pick. Not everything you see on a recruiting visit is going to actually happen at the school. Or maybe a coach leaves, or maybe the academics aren't exactly where you thought they'd be. There are plenty of reasons to want to leave a school. It is hard to find the perfect school for you in a single visit, so I will get that out of the way now. Grant, some people might argue that these kids are there for school, and that should be the main focus. And they aren't professional league wrestlers or in the real world yet. However, that is just the thing. Some guys like Patrick Brucky are able to transfer from Princeton a really good school to get an awesome master's degree at Michigan. So an undergrad in Princeton and a graduate degree at Michigan, which is very realistic to help people get their education now. These young men can use their transfer portal to help their education is the bottom line there too. In some cases, it can hurt with credits not transferring, but that's a risk some wrestlers are just willing to take. Also, at the end of the day, you should go somewhere where you know you're going to be the best wrestler you can be. Some people are going to be stuck behind multiple time national champions or multiple All-Americans, and some guys cases, they should leave and go to a program where they're going to make a huge impact. They love the school. They love the culture. Other people are going to see that multiple time All-American and say, they're only going to make me better. And that's the whole reason I'm in college wrestling to be the best wrestler I can be. I mean, look at Jack Medley in Michigan. This dude's been behind Dylan Raguson, who's on the Cubs of All-American and Nick Suriano, a multiple time national champ now. And he has not entered the transfer portal at all. He is becoming the best wrestler he can be. On the other hand, back to Nick Seriano, during his first transfer period, it was not allowed to transfer within the same conference without losing a year of eligibility. Not a redshirt season, you would just drop a year. Now, knowing what we do about Nick Seriano, he probably would have loved that. I mean, he basically took a year off of college during COVID anyway, where he was just traveling around to places to train. But I'm just saying this point to tell everyone about the past guidelines. However, in the long run, Seriano still transferred to Rutgers and there was no repercussions. And shortly after that, the birth of the transfer portal was coming into the forefront. And now we have a much easier and realistic way to talk to athletes who are considering transferring. Let's use an athlete in the same time period, Mickey Philippi, now at Pitt, but formerly at Virginia. He transferred from Virginia to Pitt and he had to sit a complete year. I actually remember seeing him going to opens and he was just unattached during that time period. But once these rules changed shortly after the Suriano incident, Philippi was awarded his other year back, basically giving him a free red shirt. This is something not a lot of people mention, but I think this is pretty big, especially for people of their level. Mickey Philippi's case is very rare, but I just wanted to mention it since we're on the topic of the transfer portal and how it all got established. Alright, so that is how they got started and some interesting cases to show the development of the transfer portal, but how is it still evolving and how is it going now? Well, to be fair, I think it is a good thing for athletes. I mean, coaches can leave whenever they want, so why can't the wrestlers? In the NFL, players can sort of play wherever they want if the contract is right, but to be the devil's advocate, some of these wrestlers are just leaving for their own selfish reasons. And I think that's where most of the coaches are getting upset with the transfer portal. For example, some guys might just blame everything on the coach and just leave. This is clearly creating a toxic environment like John Smith is alluding to. I think it is fair that a kid could leave if they do not like it. But when a kid has just so much power and can take little to no blame for just leaving or a coach doing their job, it can definitely create a weird environment for everybody. The other problem is a school putting so much time into an athlete and then a wrestler just getting up and leaving to go to a better school for wrestling. 
Lane. Example of this is Meyer from Edinburgh to Virginia Tech, Bullsack from Clearing to Rutgers, and Gross from South Dakota State to Wisconsin. Now, two of these options in Myers and Gross were due to coaching changes, and Bullsack's transfer was due to a lack of graduate degrees, so these are all legit options. I'm just saying I could see a lot of smaller schools complain about it because they could develop one single guy that gets really good, and then he could just leave whenever he wants. However, to play big school devil's advocate, a guy like Nick Seriano has left Penn State in a 125 hole for several years, and then Rutgers lost their first national champ just like that. I'm sure he had a legit reason, and hopefully there is no hard feelings, but you have to think, this is annoying at first. Also, I love Nick Seriano, by the way, so I'm not trying to start anything. He is just an easy example to use for this video. Another Penn State example is Brody Teske, who said he was a little homesick or didn't really like to train at Penn State, so he moved back and is now at Northern Iowa. I'm sure there's another annoying example for coaching staffs, but that is Drew Hildebrandt and Max Dean. Both went to schools for a very long time, they're relatively on the small side, and they took up a ton of resources just for them to transfer to one of the most well-known powerhouses in the land. Some other massive moves were Wick leaving Wisconsin to go to Cal Poly, and McKenna leaving Stanford to wrestle at Ohio State. Like I said, they have their reasons, and it is realistic that an athlete should be allowed to leave, but those were some five-star recruits at universities for a long time, just picking up and going. To be fair, I am I'm really happy it worked out for them, but like I have said all video, that really has to sting for coaches. Now, of course, some people might enter the portal and realize their stock really isn't as high as they thought. One key thing to note is once you enter the portal, your money from your current school can be removed. You can also define as an athlete whether you want to be contacted, so basically getting recruit again, or you can stay do not contact, which means you have to do all the contacting and reach out to schools you are interested in. We are sort of in a state like this with the transfer portal. Every kid will be recruited the traditional way, but but now, there's another layer on top of it where you can prove your worth and then transition into your dream university. A very similar example of this is the Ironman situation. He was never looked at by Iowa, but he proved himself in bunches at Missouri and then left to go to Iowa for their team and RTC Promise. Years ago, he would have to wait until he graduated and then move to Iowa City and maybe not get as much money to train there. Grant Ironman's a very good freestyle wrestler to begin with, so I think he still would have been recruited to their RTC just as heavily. Alright, I've played devil's advocate for a little bit, brought up some good examples, and gave a minor history lesson on at least how the idea started. So you're all probably wondering on my viewpoint, and that is yes, I love the transfer portal. It brings a more professional feel to the sport and gives young adults freedom to choose more. Should there be more consequences? Well, I think the ability to remove their scholarship money the second they enter is a pretty good way to do that. Kids should not be forced to stay at a school they don't like for four to five years. That isn't even how the real world works with jobs. Also, no one in the NBA, NFL, NHL, whatever, has won a national championship on all originally drafted guys in a very, very long time. I bring that point up because a few people are saying Penn State has so much power in the transfer portal, and what I say to that is all the big schools have major power. The top three and top four teams, for that matter, all had transfers on their teams. DeSano and Ironman for Iowa were both transfers, and they're nowhere near as good without those two mulling in their team for the past few years. Penn State, yes, had Hildebrandt and Dean, who were top four All-Americans, and they almost had Wick. Oh my gosh, all right, that might have been a little crazy, but he went to Cal Poly. Then there is Michigan, who had Michich, a former Northwestern Wildcat from a long time ago, Brucky, a Princeton Tiger, and their sole champ, Suriano, who I've talked about enough on this video. ASU also had McGee from Old Dominion and Parco from Fresno State, but both of those programs were cut, so if you have something against them transferring, I don't know what you are thinking, but there should be no gripes with them. <laughs> the list goes on with major teams having major transfers. That is just where we are in the sport, and it's just making the sport, you ready for for it, more realistic to the real world, and honestly, more fun to watch. These guys are still developing and growing, so I love the portal. And answer my title question, do I think it is good or bad? Well, I love it, so I'm obviously on the good side of things, and I have wrestled in college, so I have seen the good and bad of transferring on my own team. I see both sides of these arguments, but for now, based on what I said, here are my thoughts. I think it is good for the sport, the athletes in the sport, and the future of athletics as a whole. Well everyone, I am sure some of you loved this video and others probably hated it. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. This video was a lot of fun to research and write so I hope to do more stuff like this especially in the off season when we all have a little bit more time on our hands. If you are still here to the end, be sure to follow me on Patreon and support me. That would be extremely awesome. I just adjusted the prices a little bit over there so I really appreciate it if you would just at least go check it out. I also started a new Instagram just for True Tan Wrestling and please consider following following that and my Twitter. With all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.